You're watching a production of South Dakota Public Broadcasting. As we've discussed in other programs, there are many ways South Dakotans stay connected. Roads, for example, and customs we share. Another way is by keeping up with our state's news. Good evening. Drugs, a police pursuit, and car crash. Through newspapers, radio and TV, Doing Let that be a lesson. and the internet. In the 1800s, almost every American town, even tiny ones, claimed its own newspaper. Big towns often had several that competed against each other for readers, sometimes trying to outdo one another with attention-grabbing headlines. The first newspaper in what's now South Dakota was published at Sioux Falls in 1858. Named the Dakota Democrat, it lasted only about four years. The next newspaper, the Weekly Dakotan, began in 1861 at Yankton and is still published today as the Press in Dakotan. Many of today's South Dakota newspapers date back to the 1800s when they got off to profitable beginnings because of homesteaders who filled the land. The law said homesteaders had to buy five newspaper ads telling the public when they had lived on the land long enough and made enough improvements to claim it as their own. Most Dakota Territory newspapers were printed in English, but because settlers came from around the world, some were written in other languages, like German or Russian. Whatever the language, readers looked to them for local news, as well as news from other parts of the nation, received by telegraph. And sometimes Dakota Territory news was big enough to make headlines all across the United States. In 1874, for example, scientists exploring the Black Hills with George Custer and his army troops announced the area was rich with gold. Gold by the hatful, read headlines, enough to pay off the national debt. As often happens with news, people read it and took action. Gold seekers swarmed to the Black Hills, even though it was against the law to do so. The region had been set aside for the Lakota-speaking American Indians and was not open to outsiders. But the gold news caused so much excitement that no one, not even the United States Army, could keep people out. Some gold seekers got rich, many failed. And one, Richard Hughes, became editor of the Black Hills Journal, a newspaper started in 1878 and still going today as the Rapid City Journal. It's South Dakota's second biggest paper. The biggest is the Sioux Falls Argus Leader, which can be traced back to two newspapers of the 1880s, one called the Argus, one called the Leader. What news did Dakotans of the 1880s read? The big story was whether or not the territory would become a state. For a while, that looked likely in 1883 and again in 1885. But not until November 2nd, 1889, did President Benjamin Harrison sign a proclamation making South Dakota and North Dakota the 39th and 40th states. We are a state, ran the Yankton Press and Dakotan headline. Ring the bells and shoot the cannon. People did. The next year, South Dakota papers were full of emotional views about whether Huron or Pierre should be the state capital. In a November election, Pierre won. Meaning it would always be in the news, especially each winter when legislators came to town to make laws. 
Because the public can be active in government only if it knows what's happening, this news is always important. In the 20th century, South Dakota papers reported elections, disputes between company owners and their workers, bank robberies, and more. Newspapers also took positions. For example, Alice Gossage, longtime Rapid City Journal editor, used her paper to speak up for voting rights for women and against liquor sales. But newspaper owners told their readers that even though they stated opinions in certain parts of their papers, they expected their reporters to tell both sides of controversial stories. Agriculture was important news everywhere across South Dakota. Farmers and ranchers needed to know crop conditions, weather outlooks, and prices they could expect for selling crops and livestock. Sisters Edith and Ida Ammons knew exactly how to report that kind of news. They came to South Dakota as homesteaders and farmed together before starting newspapers. Beginning in the 1920s, newspapers had competition, an invention called radio. Yesterday, December 7, 1941, a date which will live in infamy. Because United weather and crop America prices could change suddenly and radio could update its news instantly, farmers and ranchers who had electricity listened regularly. This is WNAX, radio phone sending station, broadcasting from Yankton, South Dakota. WNAX, a Yankton radio station, got its start in 1927, and South Dakota farmers quickly came to trust D.B. Gurney, station president and farm reporter. Another trusted voice belonged to Ida McNeil of Piers KGFX radio station. At first, she used a radio just to speak to her husband, an engineer on trains between Pier and Rapid City. But other people heard her voice as well and told her she should make broadcasting her career. She did and ran KGFX for more than 30 years. Together in the 1930s and 1940s, newspapers and radio covered the state's news. While newspapers had headlines, radio had bulletins, important news sometimes so urgent it interrupted other programs. South Dakota's first woman United States Senator. She will serve the last two months of the late Peter Norbeck's term. Gladys Pyle was also the state's first woman legislator and the first to serve as South Dakota Secretary. Here's a bulletin from WNAX. A storm with lightning and strong wind is moving westward across Hutchinson and Bonhomme counties this hour. Here's a report. Senator Francis Case of South Dakota expects a key vote in the U.S. Senate today regarding hope for four massive Missouri River dams in the state. Senator Case has been the main force in South Dakota pushing for the dams, which should ease flooding and also... Some radio news reporters found themselves doing a different type of broadcasting in the 1950s. KELO of Sioux Falls was the state's first TV station, going on the air in 1953. To announce that we are the first television station in South Dakota. Two years later, Rapid City's KOTA became Western South Dakota's first TV service. In the 1970s, it seemed like South Dakota made national news as never before. The terrible June 9, 1972 Rapid City flood shocked Americans. 238 people died. That same summer, George McGovern from the Mitchell area won the Democratic Party's nomination for President of the United States. If you really believed that the most important thing we can do in 1972 is to put this country on the path to peace, you ought to vote for George McGovern. It's a great thrill to pick up the newspaper day after day and find your name on the front page, what you said the day before, what you think about uh, the country, how you feel about education, about the environment, about health care, about uh, in that day the Vietnam War, and how it would be the Iraqi War. Um, you have to be careful not to get uh, so um, proud about all the coverage you're getting that you get careless about <laughs> what you're saying. But it's a thrill to be on, the, on television and to be on the newspapers 
and to have everything you say in the course of a presidential campaign reported to the general public, I should say it's far more than a thrill. It's a great satisfaction and a great uh, privilege to have that kind of uh, uh, news coverage in connection with a presidential campaign. In 1973, the town of Wounded Knee made news. About 150 members of a group called the American Indian Movement, AIM for short, took over the town to protest conditions on the Pine Ridge Reservation. One of the saddest South Dakota news stories was another of those that no one could have predicted when they woke up on April 19, 1993. The twin-engine plane owned by the state of South Dakota has crashed into a farm building south of the airport in Dubuque, Iowa. That day, Governor George Mickelson and seven other men died in a crash of a state-owned airplane. It was the first time one of our governors died while still holding that job. As the 21st century began, people were getting news over their computers. Now, South Dakotans living or vacationing anywhere in the world can stay connected to their home state with the click of a mouse. One thing's for sure about the 21st century. In one way or another, South Dakotans will make news and report it. For additional information, a teacher's guide, games, quizzes, and more, log on to dakotapathways.org.